Hello, my name is James Brown and this is my entry into the uh, TubeDepot.com Tube Video uh, Project Contest. Took me a while to memorize that. Anyway, uh, this is a project that I've completed um, using tube uh, vacuum tubes. It's a tube amplifier, guitar amplifier, and it's based on the circuit, uh, the standard circuit from uh, London Power's Kevin O'Connor. wrote a series of books called The Ultimate Tone. This is from Volume 5, and it has a lot of unique features. This, by the way, is my first build. Um, I really have no technical training at all, no training at all, I should say, in electronics, but uh, I really badly wanted to have a nice guitar tube amplifier and uh, so I went and built this one. I do not recommend it for a fir first project though. Uh, very difficult. Took me almost a year to finish. Anyway, um, I'll show you a little bit about the features. Okay. Now this is a two-channel amplifier, has an input here. Uh, the top channel, or the top controls, are the lead channel for distortion, and the bottom controls are the uh, clean. It, the circuit is based on a Fender clean sound and a Marshall distortion sound. Kind of the best of both, wor both worlds there. Uh, they have independent volume controls and independent uh, reverb controls. I use the Accutronics um, long delay. Uh, I don't know, I think it was a three spring or a six spring or whatever they come with. And uh, it has, this amplifier also has uh, LEDs of course to tell you what channel you're using. Um, also a master control or a master volume a body control which controls the presence. It can make it sound uh, more like a single-ended amp or uh, full-bore uh, push-pull style. Uh, limit control is a type of a volume control and it also affects the sound. The sag control is uh, a control that allows the uh, amplifier to have like a tube rect rectifier sound. It actually has a solid-state rectifier in it. Uh, but uh, this will simulate uh, tube amp, uh, tube rectifier um, very well or an undersized power supply for a tube amp that's cranked really hard. Uh, also something that's unique to this circuit or not this circuit but London power circuits, Ke Kevin O'Connor circuits is the uh, power scaling. Uh, it allows a person to get down into the milliwatts on the output power and yet still sound like a cranked amp have really good tone. Um, the amplifier has 10 vacuum tubes in it. It has uh, 5 uh, AX, 12AX7 and uh, one 12AT7 for the reverb and 4 output power tubes. Now I'm going to turn it around and we'll get to look at the back, which is actually also full of goodies. Okay, now we have the, of course the power input has a fuse in it, uh, on off switch. The uh, amplifier has individual bias controls for each tube. And uh, it also has bias tip pin meter jacks so that you can set the bias very easily without having to do anything funky. Um, the, another nice thing is that each tube has a, a triode pentode mode. Uh, you can switch in between a triode and a pentode for each individual tube. Also, each set of tubes of the push-pull pair have a bias uh, control. You can go from a fixed bias to a cathode bias and uh, gives you a more round sound of course also drops the power output 
coupled with the triode you could get the power down a lot less. I currently have a pair of the uh, the uh, tongue sole uh, EL34B's in here right now and uh, I'm using that so working against a pair of uh, 6L6's or WGB's or what they call stubbies, 5881's, Jan Phillips um, they were new old stock when I bought them a few years ago anyway another a few other things of course it's, uh, it has the uh, 8 ohm 4 ohm switch for the speaker have a EV Force 15 inch speaker in the cabinet that I'm using currently um, it also has a ground lift a foot switch to be able to switch in between the channels the clean and the uh, distortion also a line out which um, enables you to plug into another amplifier possibly even into um, something to record with too. It has a two buffered FX send and return loop which is really nice. Um, be able to put something in there and um, have your effects and have them sound good without interfering with the signal chain and sucking tone. Um, the cabinet's made out of uh, three-quarter inch plywood, uh, birch plywood, stained mahogany color. Um, the uh, transformers are uh, Hammond transformers. I can't tell you what they are right off the top of my head, but they're it's a, approximately a 50 to 60 watt amp. Uh, gets plenty loud. And of course, you want to know how it sounds, right? Yes. Uh, well, unfortunately, I just took my guitar to uh, have it professionally set up, but I do have my bass, and so what I'll do is I'll, I'll show you that it actually does work uh, like it's supposed to and give you a little um, demonstration. Now, what I'd like you to do is please keep in mind that I'm not a guitar player. I'm not a bass player. Um, you could tell that if you heard me play guitar. I'm going to prove it on bass, but anyway, this is the to the clean channel on the amp. Anyway, uh, that's the clean channel. Now, notice when I switch this to the distortion that, uh, or to the lead channel you get no pop. All that, all that you heard was just a click of the switch on the floor. Obviously this is the distortion. High gain channel. power scaling how it works and we're going to the master right now is set about nine o'clock we're going to peg that uh, but we're going to turn down the power scaling first and we're going to turn it over to the clean channel just so you get an idea and I got the master pegged now and we turn the power scaling all the way down. This is uh, definitely below a watt. Now, as you can tell, when I'm talking, I couldn't do that if it was a full watt or more. Still sounds good. You like that overdriven bass sound? Anyway, um, this is my entry into the uh, TubeDepot.com um, tube video project, tube amplifier video project, something like that.